Well, you know, first off, uh, can't thank our fans enough. You know, uh, just kind of a magical moment out there uh, tonight, being that it's late September. You know, we moved this game up two weeks, really for the development of our team, but also from a recruiting perspective that uh, it allows everybody to make maybe more of an informed decision earlier, especially as it applies to uh, to our program. So um, that was the reason. But, you know, you worry you have it on a Friday evening and it's September, you know, will we still have the same – crowd pageantry uh, that we've enjoyed here for really the last 10 years with this game and obviously tonight uh, we had it again so I can't thank our fans enough it's it's not just meaningful for our own team because you got to understand the jitters that these guys have when they get out in front of 14,000 for the first time they've been looking forward to this day for so many years and really from the onset if you're a freshman the second you uh, make your decision, you envision this game for you. So you have to get the jitters out. and But the fact they can get out here and play in front of a crowd like we had uh, only helps, you know, the first month of our year. And uh, you learn a lot about our team. And then, you know, the second phase is obviously the future of our program, uh, this being uh, just a really key recruiting weekend. So, you know, thank, thank you to uh, everybody who is here. Um, I mentioned some comments about George Khalil. And I think George has a special place in everybody's heart that knows uh, Tucson, Arizona, the university, but especially our basketball program. I mean, he's been a fixture for decades and uh, just seeing him in that same seat over and over again. And, you know, we lost him this summer and it was a big, big loss, but I'm glad that we had an opportunity to at least acknowledge who he was, uh, still is, and how much he meant to our program here before tonight's game. I don't have a lot of thoughts on the game other than uh, it's just good to get out there and begin a new season. Uh, when you go to practice every day, do you kind of think, I have a lot to work with because you have a lot of talent there? Is it one of those when you go to practice, there's a lot to do because you have the people to do it with? You know, I think our front line uh, speaks for itself, uh, keeping in mind that in tonight we are playing without Chase Jeter, but Jordan Brown, we are also playing with Jordan, and Jordan is not going to play this year. You know, he'll sit out, but... You know, what I love about our practice environment is that, yes, we have quality depth and we have a lot of size and we're not going to get spooked when we play that team or in that game when that other team possesses those same qualities. Uh, and, you know, it benefits everybody. It benefits our perimeter because, you know, the gift of size and depth in basketball is uh, something that everybody, I think, would love to have. And, and we have that. It's just now up to us to uh, to develop those guys, figure out the combinations, who, who plays well with who. A great example of what I mean is Stone Gettings. You know, Stone is, A, a Cornell graduate. You know, he's in his fifth year in college. He's uh, smart off the court, but he's an incredibly hard worker on the court. But the way he plays offense is very different than our other bigs. So having him out there at times, you know, changes the way you feel about our offense because he, he can score from behind the line. Uh, he's a clever passer. He's a very good free throw shooter. So I, I like the versatility of our bigs as well because uh, we have different people that can do different things. Uh, you know, Zeke Naji had a big night because he played the piano. And, I mean, if you saw that, uh, there aren't many folks that play a piano like that. I mean, he's – immensely talented he didn't play as well in the red blue game but you know as I told him afterwards join the club I mean there are a ton of players that if you judge them only on that one night red blue you'd be really disappointed but you know Zeke could be our leading scorer and rebounder in our first game this year I mean he's a very important player uh, to our team so it's good for him just to kind of get his feet wet and get out there what are your thoughts on where Josh is uh, defensively Josh Green reminds me a lot of Nick Johnson. He's taller, has longer arms, but you know Nick's athleticism when he first got here could almost be used against him on defense. You know, going for the steal, gambling. He's like any young player as he learns, you know, the tricks of the trade, becoming more disciplined. Uh, you know, gets more practices under his belt. He could be a dynamic defensive player because he can make plays at the rim. He can guard big players. He can guard smaller, quicker guards. Uh, he can get out in the passing lanes like he did a couple times tonight. 
And, you know, Josh is like innately physical. He's, he likes contact. You know, he, when you watch him play, he, he's always bumping into somebody. And usually those guys become really good on defense. But I've been really impressed with how he's practiced. He's, uh, he's really worked hard and shown up every day, uh, willing to learn, which is that's step one for, for guys that are freshmen. Earlier this week, you said Devonair was probably your most improved player. What parts of his game have, has he improved on? Well, you saw that tonight. Uh, I don't know if you can remember what he would have looked like as a freshman in this game a year ago, but he was just almost like a, a young boy, you know, finding his way from high school to college and figuring it out. You know, he's grown up a lot. Uh, he's more mature. He's bigger, stronger, and like it used to be in our game when you practice and you earn your way through a freshman year, regardless of your role, you should have a great summer and, and be that much better as a sophomore. That's what Devonair is. And what I like about him is he can contribute in a lot of different ways for our team. We could play him at the small forward. He's a very good offensive rebounder. We're playing him at the backup point guard. You saw him do that. And, you know, it's too early to tell, but he could actually be, you know, the backup point guard and, and have that role kind of like Brandon Williams did at times a year ago when Justin Coleman would be out. Kind of maybe what we did with a guy like Nick Johnson when T.J. McConnell would sit out or, or be out of the game. So um, I think the next month will be interesting to watch Devin Air. Well, sorry, so along those lines, do you, I mean, is he ahead of Max in that sort of race? Assuming Jamal doesn't uh, get cleared to play it, like as a number two point guard at this point, would you say Devin Air is right there? Or maybe you... I, I think he's right there. That, that's not a slight at all on Max. It's, it's more along the lines of they're very different. You know, Devin Air is tall. You know, Max isn't. Uh, obviously, Max is a sniper, and he's a great shooter. You know, Devin Air is, is getting better in that area. But it really comes down to who can take care of the ball and run our system and be able to guard the other team's point guard. Uh, but I do think it's nice to have Devin Air in that role. It also helps his development. There's nothing like having that ball in your hands. And, you know, a lot of times it, it makes you a better overall player. Along those lines of Devin Air being improved, uh, Ira Lee seems like he probably has that big leap in him mm -hmm. possible where he's less thinking and more playing. Yes. So, you know, Ira Lee's your, your – you know, quintessential hard-playing athlete, right? He gives great effort. He uh, likes to do the dirty work. He'll, he'll put his body on the line every day, compete, compete, compete. Well, that same player, when he has the ball on offense, you can't play hard when you have the ball, right? Uh, it works against you. And early in his career, at times, you know, he's going too fast, uh, not taking what the defense gives. It's almost as if... When he has the ball, he plays just like he, he's reckless when he's going for an offensive rebound. But he's learning, and he's growing in that area. I do believe he made a lot of progress last year. And uh, I just think he'll, be more of a, more, he'll have more of an ability to score than maybe he has in his first two years with us. But, again, Ira's had a very good offseason, and I think his attitude is tremendous. Jamal Baker and him have been friends for a long, long time. You know, Jamal has been a great influence on Ira because Jamal is that first to the gym, last to leave, loves the game. And, uh, you know, Ira, I don't want to say tags along, but when he's your roommate, you can't help but follow that. And that's been good for Ira. Was it just precautionary with Chase? Not he, has a, he has a groin strain. Uh, I think it'll be fine. But we sat him out tonight. Is Christian almost forcing himself into a bigger role than anticipated? Yes. Yep. You know, Christian, when you have a when you have a recruiting class, and I'm as guilty as anybody uh, of this part of it is, you know, you always rave about the guys that are coming. You know, it's just you feel like you owe it to them. You believe it. Uh, you kind of see them down the road. A lot of times, it's it's not who they are now, but maybe what you project them out. But most of the time, not most of the time, but a lot of times, it's like God, they're just, they're just not quite as far along as I thought they were. And I think every coach is, is kind of falls into that category. Christian Coloco is, he's one of the rare cases where he's actually better and further along than we anticipated, which is a great thing. You know, it's, we knew his best days were down the road. Uh, you know, we knew he had a great year last year at Sierra Canyon that he developed a lot. But I just think that what he came from, uh, that winning environment, what he learned there, 
and he hasn't played basketball for very long, that he's further along in his development than maybe we, we thought he was. So uh, no doubt. I mean, everything's on the table for us on who's going to play. But to have somebody at seven feet who can protect the rim, uh, you saw, like, he's still a work in progress offensively, but, I mean, he can make plays. He can catch the ball. Uh, he's a pretty good free throw shooter. And mostly, uh, I love his work ethic. He, he, he works at the game even though he's seven feet tall. So really thrilled to have him. Well, the practices are being pushed. They will be pushed with Zeke and yeah. Chase and him and Stone. I mean, we for a long time since uh, since we have been here as a coaching staff, we've had a really good practice environment. We've had depth. You know, we've had players competing against each other every day. A year ago, we didn't have that. Uh, we just didn't have the depth uh, at certain places. Maybe the the talent, certainly the size. And you saw it was like the longer that our season went, the harder it was for us. And I would tri would attribute some of that to. We did the best we could in practice, but we we didn't have those big bodies competing against each other. And you know, football they say what good against good. You know, it's like, and we have that right now. And uh, you know, hopefully we can keep that throughout the year. For example, if Chase wasn't able to play in last year's red blue game, the game would have really looked funny. I mean, we would have ran out of people almost. But this year he didn't play, and you know we had four or five guys in there competing. So it's up to us to use that as our advantage. Like, where does that show up? Rebounding margin, being able to play through fouls, injuries, you know, being harder to score against around the basket, uh, maybe being a team that can get second shots more easily than we've we've done uh, a year and even, even two years ago. What does it say about Jake, you know, knowing he was put on scholarship last season and now he returns to <coughs> walk-on status? What does it say about him just being totally okay with that? Jake's a great kid. I mean, we uh, we've had tremendous walk-ons here. We've had unbelievable managers here. It's you know when you have a program, it's not just those that you watch run out there for the opening tip at the jump ball. The five starters. There's so much work that's done behind the scenes, and you know walk-ons uh, in college basketball are invaluable. How Nico handled himself in his first red blue game. Nico did fine. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to be his biggest fan here early on because. It's just almost unfair the high expectations that are placed on him. I mean, he's a really good player, and he's only going to get better. But he's not going to be able to do it alone. Uh, he's going to have his bumps in the road. He's seeing things for the first time. You know, tonight was his first ever moment in McHale. Uh, he's going to be that much better moving ahead. You know, you're going to see Nico play against a zone for the first time. It's going to be different. Uh, he's going to have to guard different styles. So that's why you go to college. And uh, I have no doubt that, like really all of our freshmen, they'll continue to develop and grow. But we're counting on Nico. I mean, he's a very good player. Uh, excited to coach him. But, you know, I think all everybody has to take him with a grain of salt. He's, he's going to miss a few shots. He's, he's not going to be perfect every night. But he's going to get there. There's no, there's no doubt about it. Who does he remind you of? Uh, he has a unique game because he's so skilled shooting. You know, he's a shot maker. And usually you don't say that about a point guard who can also make his teammates better. Um, I don't really know, like, no, not one player necessarily comes to mind. But uh, but being able to do both is it's hard to do. And the third part of it is to defend. And, uh, you know, and that's with all of our freshmen, the biggest jump they have to make is being able to play college defense. And... Uh, and we're working at that every day. How unique is it? Josh mentioned the other day that he likes to defend. Are there a lot of high school kids that like to defend right away? No, I think it's great that he says that, though, because that's where his talent lies immediately. You know, there are things about Josh's game that he'll work on and improve, and he'll gain experience and be better. But right out of the gates where he's blessed is with his athleticism and his physicality and you know it would be great for him to embrace that role because you know kind of like if you think about Nick Johnson when Nick really embraced that defensive role that's when everything happened good for both him and the team he played on and you know I think Josh can have a lot to do with that you know Dylan Smith is is similar like he probably doesn't get enough credit for his defense Dylan gets you now with experience. He's been through so many situations that he knows what to do and how to do it. So, you know, you think about those two guys. Uh, they're both, you know, 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. You know, Josh has longer arms, but, 
you know, hopefully those two can really help us on the defensive end. Do you see Dylan eventually breaking through offensively? I think so. You know, part of being a good player is not trying to do everything. Very few basketball players are good at everything. You know, it's those that, like, stick with what they do well, stay away from what they don't, know their role. That, those are the guys that you really admire. And, uh, you know, sometimes it takes a little bit longer to figure that out. But what does Dylan do? 40% three-point shooter, especially when he takes good ones. Excellent defensive player uh, and with his experience. And those two things, if he could bring those to the table, you know, on a daily basis for our team this year, uh, man, he, he, he'll help us win a lot of games. Dylan suggested that perhaps uh, Stone was the team's best three-point shooter, at least maybe early. Do you get that sense, or might it be somebody else? Uh, Stone is certainly capable. Um, I would say Max Hazard is our team's best shooter. And, you know, I, I didn't talk a lot about Max. Max didn't have a great night tonight. Uh, he, uh, he was maybe pressing a little bit. But, look, the one thing about Max is Max won 30 games last year. And if you've been a part of a program or team that won 30 games, that's a lot of good basketball. He played for an excellent coach, uh, Russell Turner. I mean, he won a game in the NCAA tournament. You know, Max was uh, the, the conference tournament's MVP. And, you know, he's older and he has that special skill. You saw that one burst late in the game where I think he hit a couple. He can really change the game. You know, Gabe York did that for us in the past where he could get rolling and all of a sudden you're up 10 points. So, uh, and as, as each guy gets used to playing with him, you know, it's up to us to find him. But now that I think about it, I think Dylan wasn't even close. Max is our best shooter. Coach, how has Max stepped into that role that Brandon was going to take on this year, kind of being a mentor on the court to me go? You know, Max is a great kid. Um, you know, we're very familiar with Max, even though we didn't coach him because Jacob Hazard, his older brother, was a great walk-on for us and was a part of four really good teams. So we knew Max's family. We knew Jacob. and uh, But he's an excellent student, uh, works hard at the game. You know, I talked about Jamal Baker, first to the gym, last to leave. Max has some of that too. You don't become that great of a shooter unless you put in extra time. So we really have a group of guys that love to work on their game. And, again, I think – being an older person, being through the experiences that he's that he's gone through, uh, certainly he'll be one of many guys that I think can help our freshmen and, and Nico. You know, Brandon Williams, you know, he got introduced tonight, man. It's just it's hard for me to watch him walk out there. You know, he's he's a really talented player. Uh, one of the most talented guards that we've recruited and just to see him lose this year, you know, I got my fingers crossed that his rehab continues to go well and you know, one day he'll be healthy to play. Uh, but uh, we, we miss him. You know, it's, that's a big loss for us. And, you know, thankfully we have a number of guys that I think can step up and, and hopefully fill, fill in for him. But to have him out there with, with the group that you just saw, that would take us up even another notch for, uh, for sure. Have you seen a mentor, guys like Nico and some of the younger guys? The Brandon? He's trying, you know, uh, in fairness to him, they should be mentoring him a little bit. You know, it's uh, they get to play. He doesn't. But, you know, we went through, uh, you know, watching guys lose a year. And, you know, Ray Smith was the ultimate of losing a career. It's not easy on those young guys to take that one thing away. And the thing that's hard for Brandon is, you know, he missed a whole year of high school and he missed part of last year. But, you know, we love him. Uh, you know, him and his family – they came to our program at a very difficult time and trusted us. And, you know, I'm, I'm anxious to kind of repay that trust with making sure that he gets healthy and takes care of his academics because, uh, you know, it's maybe easier on him now. It'll get harder as the year grows, for sure. But he's off crutches and making progress. So that's, I think, that's his game every day to improve. Thank you. How'd you guys feel out there? Big crowd, nice crowd? Uh, felt very com uh, comfortable. Uh, I think you feel like both teams came out with confidence. Uh, it's a lot of fun when you have uh, as many great fans as we have here. Uh, that's for sure. Z, what about you as a freshman? What was it like being your first experience at McHale? It was, it was great. I mean, it was better than I even imagined. Uh, fans brought crazy energy and uh, it was just super lively and fun to play in. Do you 
Zeke, how did it come about for you to play the national anthem on the piano today? Um, I don't know. I mean, kind of joked about it, like, in recruiting. And then kind of, like, as it came closer to time to play Red Blue, yeah, talked about it again and uh, said, yeah, so I went for it. Does it take a lot of practice? Huh? Does it take a lot of practice? Oh, yeah. I did a lot of practicing for that. <laughs> How long did you practice and when did it take you or when did you perfect playing the National Anthem on the keyboard? Um, I started practicing probably a month ago and I had it down within like, within like three or four days. It wasn't too hard, but uh, it's just maintaining it after that. Right How did you feel out there as far as like, uh, did you feel like, I mean, I know you show your, your, you're showing yourself every day in practice, but I mean, was this a statement that, you know, maybe you can play a bigger role this year? Uh, it really wasn't a statement. I just went out there and, uh, Play, uh, did what I had to do. Play as a team. Uh, I just came out there like more. I was comfortable because I'm playing. Uh, starting to get uh, into the one, so felt comfortable. More so than more, more so than last, last year. Yeah. yeah. It's really early. Uh, how's the chemistry though? Uh, we only had two official practices, so chemistry uh, is is getting up there. But uh, we still need to work on a little bit more pieces and stuff. So how how did it go for you? I mean, did you feel? After all you've been through playing at Cornell and then sitting out last year, you feel nervous out there and you're actually on the floor for the first time? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a bit of nerves, you know, that goes into it. Uh, I mean, I haven't played a game in a year and a half, but, I mean, you settle in pretty quickly and you realize, you know, a basketball game's a basketball game, and we're lucky enough to have extremely competitive practices with all the great guys that we have, uh, and it makes it a lot easier, you know. Uh, you just practice like you play. Can you compare the two teams you were on that? Um, Cornell and Arizona? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, both teams, they're obviously very different. I think this team, you know, we have a lot more height, uh, which is great. Uh, and just overall, I, I would say we're a lot deeper, you know, which enables us to kind of practice a lot harder every single day. Well, how, how would you compare the two environments you played in the Ivy League? Some programs are really good, but, mm -hmm. you know, as a lot of fans here, et cetera. Yeah, no, the, the fans are awesome here. You know, as I touched on earlier, um, it's something that, you know, even if a game sells out in the Ivy League, you know, it's selling out a four or 5,000 person arena, whereas, you know, we have 15,000 people here uh, tonight. It was quite the, quite the experience, uh, yeah. Did you, with, with being from uh, the LA area, I mean, you uh, are familiar with a lot of Pac-12 basketball and this and that, I mean, did it, I mean, did the environment still feel different than what you're seeing or, you know, did you kind of expect? Yeah, no, I mean, um, I think it was really great that I got here uh, in the spring last year because it got me acclimated to the environment and, you know, I got to kind of sit on the bench for, you know, some pretty intense games, you know, like one of the game, the game against Utah stands out to me. And, you know, it's nice that you get that experience on the bench, you know, to kind of <clears throat> realize what it's going to be like uh, so that you're even more prepared for this year. You know, sir, just uh, one, one final thing. Uh, uh, how did you guys feel just as a team, the blue team? And, uh, you know, you had some guys out there like yourself who've been around a little bit. I mean, did you feel pretty confident? You, you guys were pretty much in control that whole time. Uh, yeah, I feel like we came out with confidence. Uh, we was moving the ball, making plays for each other, uh, doing what was asked and needed. Devin, you take pride that you won the dunk contest this year? Uh, yeah, I take pride really because I, I wasn't even supposed to do it because just because like I was going to let the freshmen do it, but then I was like, I got to do it this year just because I was in the last year and I didn't really do nothing. So I had to uh, just basically try to go out there and do some. Were the, what, the dunks you did, was that just for a moment thinking of uh, uh, going, going over Christian and then the side opposite, the side in the backboard there, I think it was? Uh, was that stuff you just thought up? Because you were, like you said, you weren't playing for the end. Yeah, the second one, the off the backboard, it was just, I just said something. I was like, Nico, just throw it off the side. Uh, the first one, I've been doing it for a, a long time. So I just had to go with that one. How is Christian, was he willing to do that? I mean, uh, at first, he, like, whenever he was practicing, he was like kind of shaky because he didn't know if I could jump over him. So, But then I, uh, I did it one time in my practice, and I did it, and he just felt comfortable after that. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys.